2023 was a great year for me in old school gaming. I played classic Zelda, Echo the Dolphin, Crash Bandicoot, Ratchet and Clank, and actually managed to finally complete Mario 64. I believe it's important to preserve gaming history and learn from these all-time classics to better understand modern games development, tracing back the timeline to see what inspired the current landscape of the gaming industry, which is why the first game on my list today is none other than the original Sonic the Hedgehog. While it didn't win the war against Mario, it certainly won a place in our hearts. The original Sonic was so bold and direct that you haven't really seen anything much like it since. As a kid, I could never complete it, and I remember how tragic it was when I would inevitably run out of lives and get sent all the way back to the Green Hill Zone. Now as an adult, having finally beaten the game, I got a tremendous sense of accomplishment which I felt from very few other games this year. With faithful modern day installments such as Sonic Mania, no! and other new releases such as Sonic Frontiers and Superstars, it would appear that Sonic will remain on our screens and in our games for many more years yet to come. Baldur's Gate 3 got voted Game of the Year at Jeff Keighley's Game Awards. In my review, I only gave it a 5 out of 10, mainly due to what I consider to be cringe-inducing dialogue and clunky combat. Then a bunch of people complained and lectured me on RPGs in the comments section. The game does have a really strong premise and seems to faithfully recreate one of the major canonical templates of a Dungeons & Dragons campaign. I would very much like other companies to take inspiration from the world building and variety of choice that this game offers to player, but if you could leave the social agenda behind, that'd be great. You were supposed to rush to my defense, love. Fat lot of good you are. Mario Wonder reminded me again of why I love 2D Mario games, giving us perhaps one of the most polished and well-made Mario video games to date. Everything from the slick UI, to the animation work, to the gameplay, the puzzles, to the wonder effects, I mean, damn. You very rarely see a company experiment so much and have this amount of fun to play through. I tore through this game in just 10 days, but that was because I was playing and editing videos on it non-stop. I owe it a great depth of appreciation for breaking me out of my cryostasis, getting me back into regular uploads, and after all the backlash from that Baldur's Gate 3 review, it was nice to play something that got me focusing back on what really matters for a video game. And the drugs wear off. How fun it is to play. Counter-Strike 2 is one of those games that I honestly never thought would come out. I remember back when I did my head-to-head -head on it, I said, my dream game, I think, would be a more polished and supported version of CSGO. And in this, Counter-Strike 2 excels. The game looks great and has brought forward a fair number of the original maps, whilst also introducing some of its own new features. I played this game to death for a few weeks straight during the tail end of the beta, and once the game was properly released. However, at one point, I started to lose 500 rating per loss while only gaining about 100 on a win. Its dodgy ranked system caused me to abruptly stop playing. It's definitely got some rough edges to smooth over, but for a game that I honestly thought was never coming out, my friends and I will likely enjoy it for some time yet to come. I never made a video on it, but I did play through and complete the entirety of God of War Ragnarok. I really enjoyed the first God of War reboot game and highly anticipated the release of its sequel. Ragnarok is more of the same game we all love, a continuation of the epic adventure shared between father and son. It's rare to see storytelling so expertly cultivated, never missing a beat and always knowing when to draw us in sentimentally and then unleash our Spartan rage. On the surface level, God of War is centered around gods killing other gods, but the true impact is hidden within Kratos' newfound sense of humanity and compassion. Easily, it's one of the biggest turnaround success stories of modern era gaming, taking a character that at one point many of us wanted to see dead, to now one that none of us want to let go of. I bet all of you would have thought this would be my number one spot, didn't you? <laughs> Guess again. Tears of the Kingdom is a great game, but more importantly, it's the sequel to my all-time favorite game. 
I have a clear bias towards it and I'm sure many of you guys feel the same way. Tears of the Kingdom expanded upon the original Breath of the Wild formula well, offering us much more substance and many hours of additional gameplay, experimenting with its mechanics and generally just having a blast. I'm happy to play more of what is an extension of the original game that I liked so well, but it's due to how much of this game's identity that it owes to the original, which is why I can't put this at the number one spot. Considering my initial troubles with this game, it's strange for me to now be sitting here telling you guys that it's the best game that I've played this year. Just to give you an idea of what I went through, at launch, this game was unplayable on the PC. I actually bought a PS5 for it, which even that couldn't achieve a steady 60 frames per second at launch, and then I found out that this could only be attained at first by playing the PS4 version of the game on the PS5. That was a huge £500 investment for a game, and knowing that definitely hampered on my enjoyment of it. Still, it kept getting patched and worked on, and through the months I would return to it until, earlier this year, a good friend and I played through it together. And honestly, we had such a great time. Elden Ring has such a wide variety of weapons, stun exceeding vistas, and playstyles that I can easily recommend this game to anyone. Before I close this video off, I'd like to say a big thank you to everyone who's either watched my videos throughout 2023 or has decided to subscribe. This year, not only did we hit 300, but we've also exceeded our 400 subscriber count. So once again, thank you, and I hope you have a very happy new year.